we remember where you were born. We remember all those trips to the doctors, all those shots you had to endure. And all of that makes us know that God has a plan for your life, or you will not be here. And that plan has reached a new level now because you've been born again. You love Jesus, don't you? You want to live for Jesus? Kelly, I hope when you're twice the age you are now, 22, you'll still love the Lord like you do now. You'll still serve Him and love Him with all your might, with all your talent, with all you are. If you stay close to Jesus, that will happen. He'll be that way when you're even as old as I am, because he'll never leave you. Let's have a prayer just before you're baptized. Because, Father, we thank you for children. You told us to train up a child. And that's what Callie's mother, grandmother, grandmothers, Sunday school teachers, upward people have been doing for a long time. And now today is their reward. Father, I thank you for Kylie, what you brought her through, what you brought her to, and what you have planned for her in life. And I just pray you will bless her now with a memory, a moment that she'll never forget the day was baptized. In Christ's name, amen. Callie, baptism is a picture of death, first of all. I'm going to bury you in a watery grave. But because you are in Christ, you're going to be raised up. If you were not in Christ, you would not be. But you are in Christ. And so this is a picture of his baptism his burial, his resurrection, and he said, because I live, you shall live also. Upon your profession of faith in Christ Jesus, and in obedience to his divine command, I baptize you, Kylie, my sister, in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, who descended on him like a dove. You are buried with Jesus. And you are raised with Jesus. To live forever. God bless you. You watch the DVD. Is there any doubt God is good? He is. Sing this with Sandy from your heart.
But we've got a lot to talk about for the next few moments. First of all, Kay Allison is recovering from surgery, but not able to be out yet, so she's missing. Kenya is with Kelly in Jonesboro, Kelly's home now, still with a lot of pain and a long way to go. So we miss them today and pray for them. Donna Thomas is finally turning the corner and getting rid of the severe pain she has had. And things are looking better there. And Frances is here, but we know the obstacles in front of her, but her heart just demanded that she be here today. And Ryan is here. 16 pounds long. From June the 2nd to June the 18th, you can't imagine what they've been through. But it was not God who took you there. It was God who brought you from there. And that's why we sing, God is so good. Now, Ryan isn't up to the huggable stage yet, so don't, don't do that. He's sore. <laughs> but we are so grateful for the outlet. You got to go through some stuff, but that can be handled, okay? Give you a report on Upward, because the family did that at the same time they were carrying the burden of uh, worry. Yesterday's total, first of all, thanks to the golfers, thanks to the people who sponsored a whole, 82 of you, I think. Thanks to those who gave the door prices. Thanks for the desserts and all that. The result was, this is unbelievable, $7,300. $7,300. That was not just a one day thing. There were many days before that for Rob and April. Putting out all those signs, great. She's growing up now, she can do those things. And uh, it was a magnificent effort. The 15th time they've done this for Upward. Now, the rest of us have to do Upward, okay, along with them, okay. Now, I read it in the worship folder, and I see it in the congregation. Some of the finest fathers are in this congregation this morning. So, gentlemen, as it says here, you are worthy of honor. May your day be blessed for the blessing you are to your family. Today, it's a, a brutal day in some ways for some people, but it, on the ideal, it's a wonderful day. So I, I see it in three ways. Fathers who are, what a privilege. It'll pass quickly. Fathers who have fathers, what a blessing. And this is where I came down mostly. Fathers who had fathers. We really miss them, don't we? But anyway, Father's Day. Happy Father's Day. Now we've got one in the audience in the congregation who has a birthday today. So it's a happy birthday and a happy Father's Day, Rex Wilburn. Tuesday night, over here on the parking lot, marking the first anniversary of young Christian Durham's death, the family will host a balloon launch. First time I ever saw Donna Gaines, she came in the office one day to register Brandon and Christian. And I've liked that lady ever since, you know. So Donna, we're joining you in remembrance. It may not be long 
until we see him again. Okay. 6.30, Tuesday night. Everybody's welcome. Um, the wedding has been moved to the Egyptian Country Club Saturday night, and the time has been changed. It'll be 6 o'clock. Next Sunday is the big Sunday dinner. Rex's hope and prayer and the people who joined him in giving this to make it free is that it'll be a back to normal event. About a third of our people have not come back to church because of the pandemic. We're hoping they will. And uh, maybe the dinner will be the catalyst. Anyway, next Sunday. Okay. Now, if you know anything about websites, meet with me over in these benches after the service this morning to put our ideas together because if you read it in the newsletter, the designer of our website wants to give us a free one out of respect to his wife, whose last act was to do our current website. And he wants to update it or make it more modern or whatever. So if you have any experience on that, making a website. Let's talk about it and then we'll get our ideas to him, okay? Now, all of that's passed. Bonnie, it's time for our boys and girls to light up this place. Boy, that they do. They are definitely a light. You're gonna sit in and get Brad's chair? That's fine. Fine with me. You're gonna sit right there. You're gonna be so proud of your sister. It wasn't long ago that you were up there, right? Yeah. And you'll be there. <laughs> he doesn't know how to swim, huh? <laughs> He'll live. He'll live. You do, man. Have you guys ever heard the story about the three little pigs? Yeah. Yeah? Did you do you know the story about the three little pigs? Yeah. Well, they're three little pigs, and they built three houses. What was the first house they built? Do you remember? <gasps> straw. Is straw very good building material? No. No, it's not. I don't think it would stand up for too much, do you? No. It'd be what happened when the big bad wolf come along. What did he do with the straw house? He blew it down. Then what did they build their house out of? Sticks. Sticks. There's Miss Kylie, woman of the hour. <laughs> Did you have to get wet? Yeah. <laughs> but they know that six groups, be careful there. Get back. There you go. They build it out of sticks. Six is not a real good, but it's better than straw. Six is better than straw. And what happened when the big bad wolf come in? Blew the sticks down, didn't it? What did the third little pig build this house of? Bricks. Now that's the way to build a house. It makes it nice and strong, doesn't it? Like our church is built out of bricks. So when the big bad wolf came along there, he couldn't blow the house down, could he? He burned out the oil in the pot of oil, right? You know, it's kind of like Think about it. It's kind of like our faith. You know, when we first start out, like in Sunday school, we hear stories about Jesus, and we go to vacation Bible school, we learn a little bit more. You know, it's kind of like when we first start building our faith, it's built out of, uh, we'll call it a straw faith, because sometimes if it doesn't grow and build, Satan can come along and he can wipe out our faith because it's so weak. But the more we go to Sunday school, the more we go to church, the more we read our Bible and vacation Bible school and upward, that builds it up too. You build that faith and build that faith and build that faith and trust until you get a faith that's built on bricks. And that's the kind of faith we want. Right? Right. <laughs> you guys are totally dead. <laughs> All right, so we got to keep going and keep going and keep going. We can't just stop. Huh? We need bricks. We need lots of bricks. Huh? Iron is better than bricks. Well, a lot of times they use uh, steel frames before they build. Makes it even extra strong. So we continue 
as now, and we keep growing and growing. And that's what Kylie's done. She's gone from a straw face right up to a brick face. Diamond, she's a diamond level. There you go, Kylie, you're a diamond level. Yeah. All right, Kylie's a diamond level in our book, right? Yeah. There's not a lot. No, there's not, but there will be. Will be. All right, Mr. Bill giving us another treat. You say, guys, say, thank you, Mr. Bill. Well, that was pretty strong, right? There you go. We want a great thank you. Thank you for our fathers, all they've done for us, given to us, and 
all that they've sacrificed for us, Lord, but most of all, we thank you for the sacrifice that you give us all. Lord, as we take this blessing, we just ask you to use it for your honor, your glory, for your kingdom, and a special blessing on those givers as well. All these things we ask in your son's name. Amen. Amen. Be sure and take any shirt while passing by. <laughs> We are now living in spiritually darkening times. We have come to the post-Christian era, and soon, I think, we'll be coming to the post-rapture world. I want to tell you how we got here. I'm going to read two 
verses of scripture, if you'd like to see them, the first one is on page 785 in the Dean Historic Memorial Bible. Page 785 is Romans 1, 18 in your Bible. Romans 1, 18. I want you to see it, page 785. For the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and unrighteousness of men. Now watch the next phrase. Who suppress the truth in unrighteousness. Who suppress the truth in unrighteousness. It takes unrighteousness to suppress the truth. Now the other one is page 815. Ephesians 5, 8 to 10. Our portion thereof. Ephesians 5, verse 8, page 815. For you were once darkness, but now you are light in the Lord. Walk as children of light. For the fruit of the Spirit is in all goodness, underline it, righteousness and truth. Proving what is acceptable to the Lord. Righteousness and truth. Now, look right here. Truth and righteousness go hand in hand. Truth and righteousness go hand in hand. So, guess what? If you don't have righteousness, you don't have truth. If we were Quakers, we would sit here until time to go home and silently think about that. The reason our world is in the shape it's in now is because there's no righteousness. So therefore, truth has disappeared. And we are living with the lie every single day, in every single quarter. Without righteousness, there will be no truth. Only deception, misstatements, misinformation, and absolute lies. If there's no righteousness. In the America of 2020 and 2021, truth does not matter. In media, truth does not matter. I don't know how we could have lost it. Hardly a reputable journalist anymore. And they don't last long. They don't get jobs. In America, truth does not matter in government. We have been lied to so many times, so many ways. Truth does not matter because there's no righteousness. We have suffered speech suppression. You can only speak if you speak the lie. You have to be silenced if you're going to speak the truth. We have complete media bias and propaganda, a flood of lies. Christians are now called domestic terrorists in public forums, on national news, and there's no outcry. Evil has been ripening for decades, and now it is fully ripe. I read a story this week in a book that Mary Satterfield gave me about an American pilot taken captive by the Viet Cong in 1965. His name was Jeremiah Denton. For eight years, and these are the eight most critical years. 65 to 73, he was in isolation in a Vietnam prison and torture. For eight years, he had no communication from home. He knew nothing about what was going on. When he got out in 1973, he came back to an America he did not recognize. 
For example, the floodgates of pornography had been opened while he was in prison. Before that, there were family movies and shows. During that time, he was isolated. Abortion became legal, protected, and funded. The gay movement was on the march. TV producers were pushing the envelope at every turn. In the movie theater, everything went. The year of Denton's imprisonment, the Academy Award winning movie was Sound of Music. When it came out, it was Midnight Cowboy, the first X-rated movie to win the Academy Award. The 60s challenged everything. Truth was relative. That means what's true for you is not necessarily true for them. What's true for them is not necessarily true for me. What is my truth? What is your truth? Free love became the order of the day. And now we are reaping what we had sown in the 60s. It really reared its ugly head when under God, those two words were inserted into our Pledge of Allegiance. That was just too much for Satan and his team. Now there is a full-throated opposition to God and the Christian faith. Because of no righteousness, we're living in an anti-truth culture. In eight years, <clears throat> we went, as it were, from leave it to beaver to Beavis and Buckhead, a flip, a turnover. And America was on a different track. Parents are no longer aided by schools, entertainment, music. The home has no allies in raising kids. Transgenderism, hormone treatment, they're coming after your children, by the way. Train up a child, that works both ways. They know it. We have tended to forget it, to some extent. Watch out for the critical race theory. We just spent a lot of time in Q&A on it this morning. How will children be able to stand firm how will your grandchildren be able to stand at all? America is not systemic racist. There are those who want us to believe it is. It's not true. I think we're a good example here. We never refer to a kid as white or black. It's just a kid. There are racists on both sides but not in the system. Upper is just one example. It's a beautiful example. Racism is required by a Marxist movement. A free people cannot be enslaved or coerced. But under Marxism, you're not free. Your freedoms have been taken away. So why all the lockdowns for a virus that was 99.9% curable? Why all this destruction and devastation over something that is that curable? Why the coming economic implosion? Because a poor people are more likely to submit to control. The poor people are the ones least likely to rise up. Just give us a handout and we're content, we're thankful. People are just tools used to build the platform for the Antichrist. And they're building it now. It's under construction. 
They're after small businesses. You know why? Because they're too independent. The woke corporations want their way, their power. You don't get any because you're just too independent. If what is happening in our nation doesn't concern you or frighten you, then one of two things is true. You either don't know what's happening or you approve what's happening. You who love country may not want to know this, but your nation's leaders in both parties are selling America to the highest bidders. But it's a lot better to know the truth than to be deceived and lulled to sleep. They told us to follow the science with this virus. Remember that? Follow the science. Well, there wasn't any. It kept changing from week to week. But I tell you a science you can follow, abortion. Science tells us that that baby is a viable person after just a few weeks. The heart is beating. The fingerprints are established. The smile comes at 16 weeks. That's science, you all. Follow it. No, not going to follow that science. So follow this virus science. Stay updated. Hypocrites. You need to pray for discernment because discernment is a truth detector. Truth is narrow. You know that, don't you? You have a 10-digit phone number. I want to call you. If I get one number wrong, I don't get you. Truth is narrow. And truth is also uncomfortable. And that's where a lot of people leave it. Without truth, though, sense becomes nonsense. Do you know there's a national organization now putting up billboards? There is no God. There is no hell. You want to bet your soul on that? At the end of time, <clears throat> if not before, the truth will be known about the source of COVID-19, about the 2020 election, about the World Health Organization, about CDC, about Soros and Gates and Fossey. The truth will be known. <laughs> The truth about June the 6th in Washington will come out. The truth why we butted up to Iran this year will come out. <clears throat> now, we've all heard this before. Do you promise to tell the truth, the whole truth, nothing but the truth? Don't count on hearing that just from anywhere. You're not going to hear it from the media. You're not going to hear it in the court system, although they call for it, but with slick lawyers and bulk judges and liberal people, you're not going to get the truth. You're not going to get it at the university either because their obsession is with socialism and communism. You're not going to get it from the government, the mayors and the governors and the senators and the congressmen and the CIA and the FBI. You know you're not going to get the truth from any of them. There's only one place to go for the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. Thy word is truth, John 17, verse 17. I'd like to share a bit of it with you in our remaining moments. First truth, <clears throat> in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Evolution is a lie. It's a joke. But if you're not going to accept God, you've got to come up with something, and that's the best thing to come up with. <clears throat> Another truth. I saw it on social media. A guy in his room called the office and the clerk. I want a wake-up call. Okay. 
The wages of sin is death. The gift of eternal life is from God. It's a wake-up call, folks. And a lot of people need to hear that. The wages of sin is death. But the gift of God is life. That's true. How about this one? The heart, Jeremiah said, is deceitful, untruthful, above all things, and desperately wicked. That's the truth. That's why you need a new heart. We were born in sin. We need to be born again from above. But here is the sum of all truth. Despite what we were, fallen, broken, sinful, God so loved the world. He gave his only begotten Son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. That's all the truth you'll ever need to know. God cannot lie. The Bible says, truthfully, we're going to stand before Christ at the banquet to have our life reviewed, examined, the good rewarded, the worthless burned up. It's going to happen. It also says that we're not all going to die. I'm counting on that. Better hurry. <clears throat> But we'll all be changed in a moment, in the twinkling of an eye. The dead shall be raised incorruptible, and we who are living shall be changed. For the Lord himself will descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of an archangel, with the trumpet of God. And the dead in Christ shall rise first, and then we who are alive shall be caught up to meet him in the air, to be together with one another and together with him forever and ever. And then it says we're going to come back with him at the end of the horrible tribulation. And for a thousand years, we're going to rule and reign with him. A thousand years when there's no sin. Everybody in government, honorable and truthful. Everybody in the home, peaceful, content, happy, and joyful. Everybody well. Everybody humble. Everybody like Christ. And here is a true statement <clears throat> that has comforted us all the way. In my father's house, Father's Day, <clears throat> are many mansions, living places. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare that place, I'm going to come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am, <clears throat> there you may be also. But you know, I, I've reserved the last truth for this final moment. Forgive me for making it personal. You make it personal. <clears throat> the greatest truth I've ever discovered in all my life. Jesus loves me. This I know. For the Bible tells me so. Thy word is truth. His truth is marching on. Catch up. Don't be left behind. Don't fall for the lie. Walk with him as the light that you are. Amen. Father, we need you to help us discern the false from the real, the wrong from the right, the lie from the truth. Give us that discernment and help us to pass it on to our children the times are critical and you are coming if you're here this morning you haven't connected with Christ you could right now ask him to forgive your sins
promise to turn away from them by his grace and ask him to come into your heart. This day is so special for me. It was on this day in 1954, I preached my first sermon. And at the end of that sermon, my dad came, gave his heart to Christ, became a good member of that Trinity Baptist Church in Paducah. It was really an eternal Father's Day. May it be so here today. Amen. Let's stand now and sing these words. Open my eyes that I may see glimpses of truth. More than glimpses of truth.
from the family I've had from the church family. He told me yesterday that he can not look forward to today because for 11 years he hadn't had a happy Father's Day since Kenny died, but today would be a real happy day Amen. because of Ryan. Now, we're going to close by singing a song that reflects who you are and why I still say this is the greatest little church in the world. So I want you to turn and face Ryan and his family. If you sing, look over your shoulder if you have to, but turn and face them like if they were down front here. I don't want to have to do that. But let's just give this to them. Lay it on them because we are one in the bond of love. Good. Thank you.